Well, I thought um, it's probably the most complete game that we have played the entire year, especially on the defensive end. Um, you know, I, I have to give our guards a lot of credit. I thought we did a good job picking them up, forcing them into turnovers. And, you know, we worked the last couple of days. We didn't like how we finished the Clemson game. We didn't like the game at all. And we thought that we kind of got all tough. And so the last couple of days, we've been talking about toughness and playing together and playing hard. And um, it may be the best defensive game that um, I've coached since I've been here uh, for two halves. And I thought we played on both ends. And we talked about it at halftime. You know, we had the big lead by 22. And we talked about winning the half. Like, I didn't just, I didn't want it to be a, a game where, you know, they made runs. I thought we came out in the second half and played entirely like we played in the first half. And then you look at guys, you know, uh, our, two, our two guards were really good. And Jarkel Joyner with um, nine assists and no turnovers. I thought, you know, Tequavion hit some big shots. And, and um, the new crowd favorite, DJ Burns, was really good. So, questions? Kevin, was there any point in the first five or six minutes where you're kind of looking out there, even to yourself in the moment, going, man, is this, is this really happening? Are we really playing this well? You know what I worried about, um, Luke, in the beginning of the game? My team has struggled this year when we wasn't scoring. And in the first three or four possessions, neither team scored. And I was like, man, this is going to be a problem because we typically, we, our offense and our defense usually struggles when we don't put the ball in a hole. And then um, we just kept playing. We stayed focused. Uh, I would say that we grew up uh, as a team. Uh, we've kind of learned from our, our few losses that we have. And it was, a good, it was a good first half. I mean, it really was. It was fun to watch. Yeah, I thought we did a good job. You know, um, you know what we talked about in the scouting report was uh, Ryan Young has been tremendous. Like, he's done a great job rebounding the ball. I think between him and uh, Armando Baycock, they're the two best offensive rebounding guys in our league. And so we focus on, hey, we got to rebound as a team. With Jack out and Dusan out, that was our two leading rebounders. So we had to find some guys, and I thought we had to do it by committee. Well, it's, it's, you know, defending home court is going to be huge. You know, when you look around the ACC, you know, anybody, I feel like on any given day, anybody can beat anybody. Um, I, I said this the other day, it's no longer the way you look at basketball games now, it's 31 games, and every team has a quad associated with it. I remember back in the day, and I was one, I'm um, sure Joe, um, Joe will say something about it. I always said, if you were 10 and 10 in the ACC, you were getting in. <laughs> it's not like that now. You have to get quad one wins, quad two wins. And we talked about that. Here's an opportunity on your home floor. You got a quad one team coming in. No matter what the name is, you got to do a good job and you got to win the game. And that's what happened. Well, they're talking about expanding the tournament to 90 now, so. I think it should be 120. That is <laughs> way too less. You, uh, you you talked about defending home court and, and the urgency that your team had. How much did the atmosphere and your crowd kind of help pull you through and get that going? It was great. I mean, you know, it was, um, you know, when we made runs, you could hear them. And it, it's, these are always the toughest games because our students, all of our students are not back. And so we had to rely on the community to come and people to come to the games and I, I, I personally want to thank everybody that showed up to the games because I thought the, it was electric and it was a powerful game for us. And it's the first game that our guys have really felt what PNC can be like on a good night. When DJ got going in the second half there, were you just kind of saying, feed the big man? Oh, man, you know it. It's like, hey, he, it's, it's funny now. And I said this, and I'm saying this jokingly, so don't print it the wrong way. To Quavion Smith, and Jaquel Joyner does all the hard work. They get the big lead. DJ Burns comes in and he scores all the points. Now he was really good. And everybody's saying, DJ, DJ. Like they forgot about the two guards. Um, but listen, it, I don't know if there's a better back to the basket score in college basketball than him. And it's weird because everybody's gone more to face up five man and guys who can shoot the three. And here's a guy that can back you down, he can score, he's got a great touch, and, um, you know, he's been really good for us. Coach, you said that uh, this is the best defensive game you've coached in 
first half and the second half, forced 21 turnovers. At what point in the first half did you realize that your defense was, was going to rule the day tonight? Whatever you, were, whatever you planned was going to work for the fourth quarter. I, th I think the first four minutes, I felt like we were locked in. Now, could we sustain that? I didn't know that. Um, you know, we all week, no, we're not all week, the last couple of days, we really concentrated on defending. I did more and shoot around talking about our defense than I did our offense. And, you know, I, so I would say the first four or five minutes, I thought we were going to be locked in. I was just hoping that we could play that way for the entire game. And if I could follow that up, uh, Casey actually brought up the, the, the lack of consistency that you guys have shown is something you guys have to be better at now that you're in this part of the schedule. Um, how do you make sure they bring this same type of intensity to the next game with this ACC? Yeah, we're growing. Um, you know, we, we've got an elite guard that came back. And I've added some new pieces. And I know because they transfers, everybody think that we should jail right away. Uh, but we're still growing. And this was a great teaching moment. And, you know, I, I, we learned a lot through losing to Clemson. But I would rather learn a lot through winning a game against Duke by 24. And so we're growing. We're going we're gonna to continue to get better. And, you know, uh, I never like the next man up mentality. I know people say that all the time. When you lose Dusan and you lose Jack, it completely changes our team. The other guys are good players, but they do it in a different way. And so I, I give credit to Ernest and give credit to Greg Gann, who I know people were surprised to see him out there, but he played today and he was good. Surprised there was no court storm or security was successful stopping the students who were here? No, you know, I, I kind of, I'm not surprised because I kind of want that. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, look, Duke and Carolina and the good teams in Virginia, they're all in our same league. And we got to get to the point when we win those games, it's not like our Super Bowl. And so I'm excited that I, I, like I was hoping that nobody stormed the floor. And it, it happened that way. So it's a good win. Are Smith and Joyner players that you think kind of led to this big stalling moment against a team like you? Like you know, I, I knew, I'm still learning Jarkel Joyner. And, and, and he and I, it was funny because Yesterday, before practice, I set those two guys down. And I said, we're going to be as good as you guys are. And you guys can't be average. You know, when I looked at, I think, against Clemson, they were 7 for 31. I was like, that's not good enough. You know, I give you a lot of offensive freedom. You guys have to be better as a group. And I thought they stepped up today. So, I mean, we're going to go as far as they take us. You know, Jason and Miranda and uh, Clark out, but your guys were the ones blocking shots when Duke would take the ball to the rack. Is that surprising? Were you open for that? No, I mean, we, you know, the EB, DeWana block shots. Um, you know, we, we're still trying to figure out now with Jack out. Jack, and we didn't know Jack was going to be out. You know, Jack, um, if you guys look at the end of the Clemson game, it's almost like he fell on a, a wet spot. And um, we got an MRI on him, and, um, you know, we don't know how long he's going to be out. But that was a big concern because I had to figure out right away who was going to take those minutes. It would If we wasn't playing against Duke, I probably would have started L.J. Thomas and kind of went with four guards. But we needed size because I was obviously they starting two seven-footers. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Happy New Year's, everyone. Thank you, Kevin.